Dr. Leslie Lee is, a, is an alumnus of uh, not only NUS, but the English uh, faculty. So, um, you know, perfect uh, person to respond to your questions. Uh, Dr. Lee, uh, we have a couple of questions on screen already. Um, so if you don't mind, I, I can uh, give you a hand. Uh, the very first question we have is how is FASS English language different from what we learned in GP um, in school? Yeah, um, well, actually it's very different um, because um, GP is more, more like general writing and like how, how, you, how you structure an essay and make an argument and that kind of thing. Um, our English language program is actually not just about the English language. Um, it really should be called a linguistics program. Um, so what we study is um, how human language works. And um, if you look at the video that we've produced, um, what you'll see is that um, we actually have three strands in the department in terms of our models. We have well, one group of modules that look at um, uh, language structure. And um, they don't just look at uh, the structure of English, but rather how do we analyze language structure, human language structure? What's the approach to analyze the sounds of language, the words in language, the structure of sentences in languages? Um, we also have another branch of modules which deal with um, language uh, in use, so like sociolinguistics. Um, so how do different people use languages differently? Um, how does uh, language, what kind of lang uh, impact does language have on our culture? What kind of uh, impact does culture have on our language? And that sorts of questions. Um, what's the relationship between language and power, language and gender, um, and these sorts of questions. Um, and then finally, our third strand has to do with language and cognition. Um, so we look at questions, we answer questions like, um, how is uh, language processed in the brain? Um, how do children learn language um, so effortlessly? Is there a difference between um, learning the children who are learning English versus children who are learning Simulay? Um, are there advantages to learning multiple languages at the same time? Um, and these kinds of things. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, the next question we have on uh, from our freshmen is, I would like to have a career that is directly related to linguistics. Can I ask what are some of such careers that are realistic in Singapore? Um, I th think it depends on what aspect of, of linguistics you're interested in. Like just now I mentioned, you know, we have, we have three different strands, right? Our focus. Um, one very applicable uh, career path would be like speech uh, uh, pathology. Uh, um, so we do have alumni who go on to do a master in speech pathology um, and uh, because of what they learn with us in terms of how speech is produced, the speech organs, um, and also how language is processed um, and understood. Um, these kinds of things would actually help them a lot when they are going on to do a professional degree in, uh, in language pathology. Um, we also have students who go on to do something more uh, computationally oriented. So if you do actually a, a double major, say in computer science and linguistics, um, you would in, be in a very uh, beautiful position to um, do a lot of very cool things which are very relevant for uh, current day um, applications. So like, in fact, in, people don't really think about this, but actually a lot of the things that um, involve natural language processing, like um, Siri, you know, how the phone actually understands what you're saying and, and say something back to you, these kinds of dialogue systems or, or simple speech recognition programs or speech uh, synthesis programs, all of these need um, linguistic knowledge. Um, you could also go into language teaching, right? Um, so if you are interested in, say, language acquisition, uh, then that, uh, you know, you would learn about theories of language acquisition, language learning, and then you could apply those when you are teaching language as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on to the next question, Dr. Lee. Uh, will we get to know the difference between American and British English or is there more to it? Oh, certainly. I mean, um, this is something that I address in my 1101, um, which I'll be teaching in this uh, coming up semester. 
um, but there's definitely more to to uh, to the, the the program than just American English and British English. Um, as I said uh, earlier already, uh, we don't just focus on English. Um, so we have many modules that look at many different languages. There's also have languages like uh, linguistic typology, um, which looks at all the different languages in the world and compares them. Like, so what do they share in common? What do they? How do they differ? Are there um, limits to how languages can differ? Um, how, what kinds of similarities group languages together or, or, or separate them? Um, we also have uh, a field methods language uh, module where uh, we invite a speaker of a undocumented or underdocumented language. Um, so it could be something like Burmese or some um, undocumented Philippine language. Um, and then our students work with them to record their language, uh, to learn more about the language. Um, and create, you know, um, materials uh, that can document that language. Thank you. Um, and the next question is this. I saw EL1101E. What is the meaning of preclusion and cross-linking with the other module listed GEK1011? Um, preclusion simply means, uh, more generally, uh, in the NUS context, it simply means that, you know, if you take this... Uh, if you've taken that module, then you cannot take this module, and vice versa. Um, uh, Cross-listing in the NUS context um, means that um, it's this, actually the same module, it's just under a different module code. Um, um, so some, some students take it as EL1101E um, if they intend to like, say do a major in it or uh, do it as one of the, to fulfill one of the baskets. Um, and then other students do it as a GE um, if they want to use it to fulfill a general um, education elective. Um, but the cross-listing has actually been delinked right now. Um, so we no longer offer it as GEK1101. Um, so it's only um, EL1101E right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. The next question from our freshman is, can you share what are the popular modules English language seniors have taken? Yeah, um, am I able to share screen? Um, yes, you, you can. Just hang on. Huh? Yeah, I, I think we've authorized you already. Okay, um, I'm going to show you the uh, English department website. Mm -hmm. um, this, are you seeing my, my screen now? Yes, we are seeing your screen. Yeah. Uh, so, um, these, uh, uh, if you go to our website, if you just Google for NUS ELL, uh, and then um, ELL is actually made out of three uh, programs, the English language program, the uh, theater studies program, and the English literature program. So if you go to modules, you see English language, English literature, and theater studies. If you go to English language, this is, uh, you see all the modules that we have. Um, and so they are grouped under semester one and semester two. So for example, I'm teaching uh, the nature of language G, yeah, EL 1101E in, in semester one. Um, some popular modules that uh, the seniors um, have taken, social variation. A lot of our students are interested in um, the social linguistic aspect of uh, language use. So uh, what kinds of social variables can affect um, how language is used? Um, how does gender affect language? How does power affect language? And these kinds of things. Um, language, culture, and mind. Um, so what's the relationship between language and culture and the, lang uh, and the way that we think, right? Um, so if you, are, you, might be, uh, you might be familiar with like the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis um, and you'll learn more about that. Um, as I mentioned just now, language typology, language and the internet, right? This is also a very popular module, right? Um, other popular modules that we have, um, well, <laughs> I teach morphology. Uh, <laughs> uh, language in contact. Um, uh, students are, this is actually a very popular module, uh, especially in the Singapore context, where we have many different languages spoken in the community, right? And they come into contact with one another. And then we have this really cool thing that we all speak called English, right? Uh, and that's what we call a contact language. Um, so this uh, language in contact module looks at properties of uh, contact languages like uh, Singlish, looks at how they arise, um, and the properties that they have, right? Um, language documentation, uh, I mentioned this is now, right? Documenting uh, uh, under described languages, cinematic discourse. So you look at 
um, cinema in particular or media in particular, right? Um, yeah, so these are language, gender, and text, of course, there are many students um, enjoy learning about the interactions between language and gender. Yeah, so I'm ready to stop sharing my screen. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, while, while waiting for the screen to come up, uh, maybe I can share the next question. How will I get to learn about social linguistics? Will I get to study from pidgin to dialects? Definitely. Um, so you will definitely learn about pidgins in the contact languages module that I showed you, right? Um, and dialects, you will start learning from 1101. Um, that's a major question that we talked about, uh, that we will discuss. Like, what's, the, what's the difference between the language and the dialect? Um, how do we draw the line between a language and a dialect? Uh, what do we mean actually by dialect? Um, do we, I mean, uh, people usually talk about things like, you know, uh, Hokkien and Cantonese as dialects. Are they really dialects? Um, so we'll be answering these kinds of questions in, even in 1101. Can, the next question, can you share what are the popular modules English language seniors have taken? I, I answered that just now. With okay. The, oh. yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, can an English degree get us a job in me in the media? Example, journalism. Uh, an English degree can actually get you a job anywhere. Um, so if uh, if I may share my screen uh, uh, again. Sure. Can can we allow Doctor Lee to share his screen? Thank you. Okay, we um, see your screen here. Yeah. yeah, so if you go to the orientation webpage, right? Um, and then uh, if you go to eTalks under humanities, right? Um, and then you see all the majors. This is the English language major. Um, and you, I invite you to please uh, look at the video here, right? There's this animation video and there's another video that I, I, I created. And here um, you, like, you see, um, the, the screenshot is actually one of the, 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 uh, the screens on the, the one of the, the, the slides on the, the, the thing that you will see. Uh, this is actually my, my classmate, right? So she, um, she first, after she graduated, she first started off uh, working in the MFA as a foreign service officer. And then after that, she went into media straight away. Uh, she went into press and she's now an editor in Bloomberg. Um, so, uh, and if you look at the, this animation video at the end of it, uh, it shows you all the different types of occupations that our alumni have actually gone into. And you'll be very surprised at the kinds of things that they've, they've done. So um, I think the important thing to note here is that um, in the present day workforce, employers are really not looking for what you majored in, but what kinds of skills you have. Um, and other skills relevant for the job. And um, are you able to present yourself as someone who is adaptable and able to learn new things continuously? Um, because um, in this new age that we are living in, um, things are moving so fast, the content that you learn may not be relevant five years down the road. So what's really important for you is to be, learn how to be adaptable, uh, how to be flexible. You know, stop, staring, uh, stop sharing now. Okay, we'll just switch to the live webinar screen. Um, for those of you who have just joined us, uh, we have Dr. Lee, Leslie Lee from English Language with us. Um, we'll be having a session on English literature directly after this. Um, so on to the next question, Dr. Lee. May I ask about may I ask about more detail into the scope of EL one one zero one E? That is. How in depth would it be into linguistics? Is there a lot of memory slash application involved? Okay, um, it's what I would call a survey module. So um, we survey the kind of the um, main areas or the broad areas of linguistics that different people are interested in. So we begin looking at the structure of language and we see, for example, uh, in the first two weeks, we look at how sound is produced. Uh, it, it sounds really simple, uh, very basic, but actually there's a lot more to it. Um, and then we look at how sounds are organized in the language. 
and then we look at words. So progressively, we look at bigger structures of, of, of language, and then we consider sentences. Then we look at how meaning is structured, um, and we look at how um, contextual meaning is conveyed, even though you m might not uh, actually say in a sentence, right? So for example, right, right now, um, if I'm feeling really warm, um, I might say something like, oh, um, I'm, I'm feeling really warm right now. Um, and then that might be a hint to somebody to like say turn on the fan or lower the air conditioning, even though I didn't say anything about that. How do we understand these things, right? Um, and then we also uh, consider social linguistics um, and linguistic anthropology, so ling language and culture. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I invite you to look at the the luminous page for one one oh one. I've listed all the topics there. Um, in terms of memory. Um, this semester um, is kind of uh, unusual, right? Because we are doing this whole e-learning thing. Um, so all the assessments will be online, um, which means they can't be closed book, right? Uh, so there's actually no memory work <laughs> involved. Um, application, definitely. Um, we want you to be able to think in, with the tools that we've given you and learn how to apply them to new situations. Um, rather than just regurgitate information. So there's definitely going to be a lot of application and this is going to be seen in every single class session that we have. Very good, thank you. Um, next question, Dr. Lee. Other than computer science and English language, what other complementary majors can we pair English language with? Uh, many things. You can it depends on your interest. Um, you could pair it with psychology if you're interested in, say, the psychology of language, right? How do um, children learn language? How do we process language? Um, how does the mind work with language? Um, how does the brain, what parts of the brain are involved in language? So um, lang language and, and psychology make a very good pairing. Um, if you are interested in social and linguistics, right, uh, the social aspects of language, um, then um, you could pair with uh, sociology, right? Um, I'm not sure if the anthropology major is uh, ready yet. Can somebody inform me? Is, do we have an anthropology major yet? Anthropology, uh, I don't, I, I, I understand it's been talked about, but I, I'm not very sure whether it's already out there. We can... Right. Uh, well, I mean, um, not yet, okay. But um, yeah. so I guess um, in the future when it does come up, then that's if you're interested in the anthropological side rather than the sociological side, then that's also another pairing that you could have. Um, we actually have an established um, pairing with uh, CNM. Um, and what does that mean? It means that you, um, you are able to do a double major in English language and CNM without having to extend your candidature. So there are enough modules that you can actually double count uh, for both major requirements. Um, and that's true also for English language and um, English literature, as well as English language and philosophy. Yeah, see, so these are all uh, com uh, combinations that will make sense. If you are really, really interested in language, um, English, you could even do something like English language and Chinese language. Right, and that would you know really give you a, a very broad perspective of how uh, you can analyze language from different uh, angles. Because what we what we offer is um, the uh, a very a more Western view of linguistics um, in some sense, um, but Chinese language would give you you know an exclusively um, you know Chinese uh, synthetic view of, of, of linguistics. Okay, thank you. Um, we, so far, we have about six uh, questions on screen. Uh, and the next one is, how will the assessment format be? Is it more of group work, projects, or oral presentations? Uh, I think this is going to differ from uh, module to module. Um, so I can only speak for EL1101, which I'll be teaching next semester. Um, there will be group work in tutorials, right? Um, so I've implemented group work um, for tutorials this coming semester 
kind of to make up for the lack of interaction that we have. I mean, I don't have a physical classroom where I can have you guys engage in discussion. So uh, in lieu of that, what we'll be doing is a bit of group work um, for tutorials. Um, there is an individual project. Um, um, and students, I think from the responses that I got last semester, uh, students really, really enjoy doing this because it's, it, it kind of gives them a chance to find their own material and reflect on their own language experiences. Um, oral presentation, we won't have the opportunity to do that this coming semester, but in the modules uh, that you take as, as an English language major, definitely there'll be a lot of um, oral presentations involved. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. And the next question is, I did not do well in my A-levels English, but love English language. Will I be make, able to make it in your major? Uh, I think if you mean A-level English, uh, it, that refers to English literature, right? Um, so that's completely um, tangential <laughs> to uh, English language. Like I said, we, we don't just focus on English language. Um, if you want to do, if you did uh, English, uh, meaning English literature in A-levels, and then you're wondering whether you would do well in English literature, uh, then I invite you to stay on for the next session by uh, my colleague, uh, who will be talking about English literature. But for uh, English language, um, completely irrelevant. Okay. okay, so on to the next question. What is this minor in English studies all about? Is it related to English language? So we have two minors. Uh, one is the minor in English language, which is exclusively about linguistics. And then one is the minor in English studies, um, which is a combination of English language and English literature. Um, so you'll be taking the, the uh, foundation modules for English language and English literature. And then you will take um, some higher level modules from both majors as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, and the next question, overseas summer programs are shown on the department website. How does this benefit English language students? I think, uh, you know, you get more exposure um, uh, in terms of, you know, like the kinds of things that you study um, and who you study with. Um, and I said, uh, as I said now, you know, you employers are looking for flexibility and adaptability and evidence of that would be in your experiences, right? So adding new things to your experiences would definitely benefit you. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, if I'm planning to double major in English and Chinese, how does English language help in our translation skills? Um, translation is actually a skill that we don't teach, but um, that Chinese language department teaches. Um, so they might do Chinese to English translation, or English to Chinese translation. Um, as I said, our focus is not really on English language per se, right? So we don't, um, we don't teach you how to structure sentences in English. We don't teach you how to uh, communicate more fluently in, in English. It's not an English communication course. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, next question, Dr. Lee. Do I have to take all 2000 level modules, level 2000 modules in order to graduate? So we have four uh, level 2000 modules in English language and these are what we consider to be the foundations. Um, so um, all students actually have to complete the four level 2000 modules as part of the major requirements. Okay, and next question is this, are there teaching assistant and research assistant opportunities in English? Um, teaching assistantships, very, very few and far between. But research assistants, definitely, uh, we have a lot of uh, our instructors actually offer UROPs, undergraduate research opportunities, right? Um, and this is where they have their own um, research project and they organize a module uh, sort of a module where they recruit students who are interested to work with them on the project. And then so for during that, that, that semester, you'll be working with that professor, maybe helping them to gather data, maybe helping them to analyze the data. Um, and then you will write a paper at the end of it um, and submit it to the professor. Um, so, and you, you, your name might end up in some kind of a publication that the professor, um, you know, publishes at the end of the, uh, at, at the, end of the day. Um, that may or may not happen. I, I can promise you that, of course. 
Um, but there are definitely these kinds of um, opportunities for you to get your hands dirty in real life research. Okay, uh, and the next question, what kind of internship opportunities are offered to English majors? Will there be opportunities related to computational linguistics, language acquisition? Um, I, I think you can find um, many kinds of internship opportunities, uh, opportunities but I think the onus is on the student to actually source out these kinds of um, opportunities, right? So you have to be able to identify your interests um, and also, um, you know, find the resources that can help you get these internships. CFG, uh, Center for Future Ready Graduates, is one such resource. So um, you should definitely look at their website and look at the kinds of internship opportunities that they have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, and the next question, do we learn about other languages as well or only, are we only restricted to English? Yeah, as I've been emphasizing throughout, right? Uh, we don't just study the English language. Um, we look at human languages in general. So there will be, you definitely look at um, other languages. We look at other, we take other languages into consideration. Um, and what we're really interested in understanding at the end of the day is um, how is human language structured, right? Um, how, what kinds of processes are involved in using human language and so on. So um, not exclusively about English, right? Um, and I really invite you to look at the, uh, the videos that we've produced on the orientation website so that you can have a better idea of what the module entails. Okay, Dr. Lee, it looks like uh, we've responded to all the queries that have come up. Uh, I wonder whether you have any uh, parting pearls of wisdom to share with our freshmen. Um, I think, and this is, I'm not going to plug English language. <laughs> um, uh, my advice to you guys really, um, just keep an open mind, right? Um, and be willing to explore. I entered and you, when I entered NUS as an undergraduate, I had my 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 mind fixed on uh, and on majoring in econ, uh, economics, and the economics department is going to hit me for this line. <laughs> but then I took the EL one O one module, and that completely changed my life. Right, uh, I even went on to do a PhD in linguistics. So um, you don't know what you will learn until you try it. So I really encourage you to to give it a shot if you think that you are there's something that you enjoy about language. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leslie Lee. On behalf of the freshmen uh, who have joined us this morning, uh, please allow me to thank you for your time and taking, um, taking this opportunity to share um, your wisdom regarding English language. Uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, for the freshmen out there, please, uh, if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to contact the FASS Dean's Office at telephone number 6516-6133 or do drop an email to fasthelp at nus.edu.sg. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for, for uh, being here on this occasion.